How did you first become interested in the history of rail yard workers? My grandfather, three of my uncles, and many cousins all worked at the rail yard or as part of the railroad. It was part of my culture. And so when I decided to look more into the rail yard, it really was more about the genealogy of my family. I'm like, why did we come here to Albuquerque? Why did so many of my relatives all come to work here in the rail yard? My grandparents came to this country in 1904 from Mexico. And when I thought about this, I thought, gosh, the Mexican Revolution hadn't started yet. Why were they leaving? What I learned was that my grandfather was 29 years of age, and my grandmother, Maura, was 23. She was five months pregnant, and they had three sons from between ages seven to four. And so they came because something happened, and there's one of two things that could have been the reason. One is at that time the Ruales, the police of Mexico, were conscripting the men. They were making them become part of the uh, Mexican military. We are thinking, you didn't want to fight? Or is it because my grandfather was a curandero, and there's a story that he had to treat the captain of the military and he had to treat them in a way that he knew he could not heal, but he was being forced to do it. And apparently that captain died. And that's part of this other part of the narrative and stories of my grandparents. Either way, my grandfather was punished for it. And what we have, what we know, our evidence was my grandfather had scars across his body from being slashed, especially on his back. So for some reason he was being physically punished that he made that decision to take him and his family to travel 1,200 miles to Albuquerque, in a why Albuquerque. Word of mouth was going on that the railroad was being built across the United States and right now in Albuquerque, New Mexico in 1904, that period, that time, they were looking for laborers. So that's why my grandfather came from La Barca, Jalisco, Mexico, straight to Albuquerque. He didn't deviate, he didn't go look for other work. This was going to be his, his destination. This was to be, ultimately, his destiny. But interesting, he didn't get the job. He came to Albuquerque, they were homeless. The stories, they lived under a tree while my grandfather looked for work. He was not hired and we don't know why. For 15 years, he kept going back to the railroad. It really was hard, especially for my grandmother, looking at the woman's perspective, right? My grandmother, being five months pregnant, ends up delivering a child. But because of the poor living conditions, that child only lived uh, six months, and then he dies. But then my grandmother, she ends up having three more children, and then my grandfather finds other jobs, and my grandmother has four more kids, and altogether she ends up having 13 children. After getting his job at the railroad, he only worked five years before he hurt his foot. He was picking up a railroad tie, and you know those are very, very heavy, and it fell on his foot. He lost two toes and then he was out of a job again from the railroad because they didn't offer workers' compensation in those days. So he ends up working as a janitor because he had no option, he had to work. But then a year later, he's back at the railroad and he's working as a flagman and he ends up working there for over 30 years uh, when he retires at the age of 75. And every day, while he went working, my grandmother and her other cousins who eventually came from Mexico and they all lived in the same community. And at lunch when the pito would blow, the women would get their tables, pull them out in their yard, the front yard, because the yard was right in front of the railroad. They'd bring out their, their beans and their chile, their carne, tamales, whatever they happened to be making that time of year. And the single men, by word of mouth, learned they could go and get a meal. 
It was interesting because they never set a price for how much to pay for food. They let the men put whatever money they felt the food was worth on the table. And my grandmother and all the other women would accept it because it was money. It was something that was coming in to help the family because that was part of everybody had a role to play. And the family culture was that my grandfather did not allow his sons to marry till their 20s or 30s because they needed the money. My grandfather felt without the family pooling together, they would never succeed in this country. So they pulled the money, he took all their money, and he doled it out as he thought necessary, but saved enough that he ends up opening a grocery store. He also finds jobs for his other sons by managing the grocery store. And then eventually he opens up a bar, a cantina called the Monte Carlo. My grandfather was very entrepreneurial in uh, working to, again, try to create advantages for his children that he knew otherwise they would not find outside the community. And I would say that not only for my grandfather, but I think for most rail yard workers, this was the heartbeat for them, the railroad. It was the one that gave opportunity to them and to their families. And that's the reason for them staying and working as many decades that many of them did. And life was hard. It was a, a smoky, dirty, loud place. My uncles who became boilermakers are a testament because they became deaf. You know, think about the big machinery, the pounding of working in boilers and the welding and all that was going on. Also, they all got emphysema. The youngest cousin who worked at the rail yard shares stories that when he would go look for his father to, to take him lunch or just to go see him, he would say it would be so smoky in there and dusty, you could, you could hardly see people. So can you can imagine working there every day with that dust to your lungs? The other, of course, are job advancements. Those are always the hardest. As I talk with other workers, especially black American families, and also within our Mexican community, the darker you were, the harder it was to advance. How does understanding the history of your family and other rail yard workers' families help us today? Their lives teach us a lot, not only about just the rail yard workers, but I think immigrants, like my maternal grandparents, people who come with little education. What they bring to this country is that they help to fill the gaps in the job industry for the low-skilled labor work. They also help to drive economic growth. They buy homes, they buy cars, they buy groceries. Everything that leads towards building the economy of this country as a whole. We need immigrants, we need young blood, we need young people to help to continue to build this country. We're the fabric of the country and we help again to make it a beautiful tapestry of people of color and different backgrounds. And that's what I think immigrants, and like my grandfather, my grandmother, and my uncles, all bring, and all of us descendants bring to this country.